Hey everybody, in this video, we're going to do a quick tour of the Craft 5 control panel and then talk through some of the changes that are coming in Craft 5 and just give an overview of how those changes impact what you see in the control panel. In future videos, I'm gonna talk about the minutia and detail of those changes, but just think about this as a gentle introduction of what to expect in Craft 5 when it comes to the control panel. All right, enjoy the video. All right, so we'll start right at the beginning, which is the login screen. And you can see that it has changed a little bit compared to Craft 4. And there is one new thing here as well, which is the sign in with the pass key, which I'll cover in a future video. But for now, let's go ahead and log in. And for this, we're going to use the Trail Quest work in progress site that I created in the Real World Craft CMS course. If you have not checked that out, go ahead and check that out. I'll be updating that course. In fact, I'll be redoing that course for Craft 5. And this is a great time to sign up for a three month Craft Quest subscription so you get access to all of the premium content that I have on the site. So the first thing you'll notice once we log in is we're on the dashboard and you can see that it looks a little bit different overall. Most specifically, the left-hand side here with the navigation is now the same color as the main content area. The icons are different. The spacing is different. Overall, a much a flatter, less contrast view happening here. And then down below, we can now toggle the sidebar to show an icon only mode, which I think is really nice. Also, not much has changed on the dashboard, but if you use the quick post widget to create a new entry, just note that it'll now open that up in a slide out, which is in keeping with the implementation of slide outs throughout the control panel. All right, let's jump into the entries. And the first thing you're going to see is a new entry listing display using cards. And these feature an image that you can choose and then any data that you wanna show in those cards. Also, we can color code the cards based on the entry type, and that allows us to have a better uh, view of those cards when we scan them. Right now we're on all entries. You can see that articles are the blue. The adventures content is this yellow. This makes it a little bit easier to view. But fret not, the normal table view is also still available and you can customize it with this customization on a per user basis so you can see things that you want to see in that listing view. Also, one thing you'll notice is in this table view, we also have a edit button. And this means that any editable fields will be available in this table view. So let me go over to adventures, go into the table view, and you can see I have images and price here. I click edit. I can go in and edit this price. And there's a little bit of a display issue there. And I can also scroll over and I can add an image. Let's say this one right here. And maybe even reorder them. You can even upload files and then click save. And then those changes have taken place. So uh, it depends on your content needs and the needs of your content authors, but we now have the ability to edit content inline in the table view. So let's switch back to the card view. This data that we show here on the card, this is customizable as well. We get to choose which fields show up here and we do that inside of our entry type settings. So if I go to settings and then entry types, which you'll notice is now a global thing. Let's go to adventures entry type, scroll down, and you can see here there's this little eye icon. This means that this field's data is going to show up in that card display. Here it is, I can toggle it to don't show in element entry cards and then show in element cards. You'll see the image icon here that indicates that this image is going to show in the 
element thumbnail. Now scrolling back up, you might have wondered about the colors. We can now set a color for each entry type and an icon. And the icons really come in handy when you're working with matrix fields because then each matrix block can have its own icon and it makes it easier to distinguish the type of content that you're dealing with. So there we go. So we have the ability to really customize this nice view of our content. And for real uh, rich content like these adventures, you know, I got a nice photo and a title, the date that the adventure takes place, and then the short description and the price to go on that adventure. So if I click into one of these, let's look at our, our create an entry or edit an entry screen and see what is a little bit different here. First, we'll start at the top with this global breadcrumb. We can choose a different section. We have a image thumbnail, the status dot, the name of the entry, the title, and then we can choose a revision. And there's also an action menu to do a couple things. We can view the front end in a new tab or delete the entry. Another thing we can do in entries now is have multiple authors. By default, you have a single author for an entry, but we can enable multiple authors and then you can just choose authors and reorder them or even remove an author like that. To enable multiple authors, you do need to go into the settings for the section and down at the bottom, there is a max authors field. By default, this will be one. If you want it to be more than one, you'll have to go in and change it. And you can do that on a per section basis. And that then means that it's easy to assign multiple authors to an entry. So that's really nice. It's going to save you from having to create an extra field that then allows that to happen. You can have it natively in that author field in craft. All right, another thing you see down here in this content builder is that we have these different uh, blocks here and a color and an icon. So let's take a look at that. I'm gonna go into settings, fields, and this is my content builder. And you can see this is a matrix field. And then I'm choosing different entry types that I want to have be created in this field. So remember matrix blocks are now entries, but the block types are now entry types. And each entry type can have a color and an icon just like we did before, right? I can edit this and change the icon and the color. And the benefit of this is in the entry edit interface is that I can now very easily see via color and icon, which of these is which. You also notice this view I have here is an interesting view, it just gives me a little bit of an overview of the content, it's in this card view. If I edit this, then I get a, a normal publish view. Same thing here, I can edit this one here and I get my rich text field. Now I can also change this as well. So if I go into settings, fields, I'm gonna go into content builder and down at the bottom, the view mode is as cards but I can also do as inline editable blocks. That's going to give us the more traditional view that you're used to with the matrix field, right? Or we can also set it up to be as an element index. Let's say include table view and we can say, you know, how we want that to look like this. Save it and go back and take a look. And it looks like this, and we get some of our things we're used to here as well. So it really depends on what your content requires. Um, I think the card view is the nicest view for this, but it really depends on what you want to do. All right, let's move down to utilities. And the main thing to report here is that you can now remove a utility or hide a utility globally from the system. To do that, you go into your ENV file and add a setting called craft disabled utilities. 
and then you pass in the slug for the utility to hide it. So here's system report and project config. So it's these two right here. If I reload, you can see they're gone. And not only gone from there, they're also gone from the listing of the permissions. So if I go into my content authors group under utilities, those utilities don't even show up to select for permissions. So you're completely hiding those utilities from the system, which might be kind of nice in some scenarios. All right, finally, let's go into settings. We've already been in here before, but you can see that the icons are different. It's a much cleaner, plain look than before. And also notice that there's no more field groups. Field groups are gone. And we also have a improved use of fields so that fields uh, can be reused. You can have multiple field instances. And I'll show you what that looks like. So if I go into an entry type and adventures, let's say, this is my field layout. So let's say I have a, a simple table, like a name value, and I'm going to change the settings for this and we'll call this adventure packing list or something, right? I can change the handle as well. So I can use that in my twig code. And I can use that same field again and customize it to be something else. So adventure highlights, we'll call this one and we'll just use the handle adventure highlights and apply. And then that's all there is to it. So we're able to reuse the same field multiple times as different instances of that field. All right, so that is a quick look at Craft 5 control panel, just a little bit of a tour. Going to have lots of videos on Craft 5, including redoing my main flagship courses to support all of the new features in Craft 5. Thanks a lot for watching. Check more out at craftquest.io and please join us in the community. Lots to learn, over 1,000 videos and hours and hours and hours of learning available. All right, we'll see you on the next video.